in our previous lecture we came to know about the different phases which are being operated over the wall of the stomach and in which we came to know that the gastric secretion is completed in three phases the first phase was the cephalic phase in which we came to know that that phase happens to be the preparatory phase for the stomach uh, for the secretion of the different secretions and even some secretions uh, like uh, the hydrochloric acid and the mucus uh, took place in that very cephalic phase and the uh, and the induction of the cephalic phase was taking place uh, under the influence of the thoughts under the influence of uh, the visual senses under the influence of uh, the some psychological factors and other things and uh, then in the gastric phase that was the largest phase in the gastric secretion we came to know what is the mechanism which is being operated over the parietal cells and how parietal cells are responsible for the synthesis of the hydrogen uh, this hydrochloric acid and how hydrogen ion pumps or the calcium gated channels or the other pumps are being operated over the lining of uh, such parietal cells and we also came to know that what is the mechanism lying behind the secretion of pepsinogen and uh, these uh, uh, gastric lipids like enzymes by the respect to peptic cells and we also came to know about the role which was being played by the mucus cells or the gobl goblet cells lying across the length and breadth of the interior wall of the stomach uh, which uh, were playing the major role in the protection of the wall of the stomach from hydrochloric acid and other these uh, uh, digestive digestive enzymes and in our today's lecture we will come to know about the intestinal phase or the third phase of the gastric secretion because we came to know that once the gastric secretion took place it lead to the synthesis of the hcl it lead to the synthesis of enzymes like uh, gastric lipase was there like uh, this pepsinogen was there and even a renin was there and all such enzymes were collectively responsible for the digestive process which were operating over the uh, biomolecules like proteins like fats isn't it and uh, after the emptying of the stomach will take place after the whole chyme will be out of the stomach and uh, empty, uh, the stomach will become empty then a mechanism should again be operated over the wall of the stomach or over the respective cells or the respective glands of uh, the stomach so that uh, the regul the regulation of the synthesis of such digestive enzymes will take place so that no harm will be done over the wall or over the different histological structures of the stomach so in our today's lecture we will come to know about the intestinal phase and the regulatory mechanism which is being operated over the stomach through which the regulation or control of the gastric secretion is taking place and here I have made a simple diagram of the stomach and in which I have mentioned a few cells and uh, I have also mentioned uh, uh, a nerve or the vagus nerve or the tenth nerve which has the major role from our nervous system for the regulation for the synthesis of the gastric enzymes or the gastric secretion. First of all, we should know that the intestinal phase is being stimulated by some factors and the most important factor for the induction of the intestinal phase of the gastric secretion takes place because of some protein product presence. Whenever there is presence of presence of I will write down here first some meat extract whenever there is presence of meat extract listen carefully and number second whenever there is presence of such protein products like peptones are there or whenever there is presence of other products like peptides are there some polypeptides as well peptides are there isn't it and uh, sometimes the presence of uh, these uh, fatty products which include glycerol fatty acids etc isn't it and the presence of all such things which act as the partial the partial digested food i may write down here the partial digested food which may include some products of the carbohydrates, some products of the lipids, some products of these proteins that will account the partial, partially digested food, which will be now pre uh, prevailing in the lower portion of the stomach, isn't it? And that partially digested food is not now called as the bolus. Now there is second term for all such partially digested food that is known as chyme. You know, first you take food and you incorporated the food items into your buccal cavity then you have seen that uh, the role which was being played by your buccal cavity and uh, 
uh, after the role which was being played by your buccal cavity, the food items ultimately got converted into the bolus and then bolus got incorporated into the stomach and in the stomach when the bolus has been acted upon by the respective gastric secretions, the same bolus has now been converted into a semi fluid or paste like substance which contains the partially digested food paste like substance which is containing the partially digested food and that very paste like substance is now called as chyme. So, it is not the food, it is not the bolus which you have to incorporate now into your intestines or into your duodenum to the pyloric sphincter but it is it will now be the partially digested bolus known as chyme which you have to inculcate into the intestinal region of your gastrointestinal tract. Now, let us see when such items are present in this very region you know that the stomach contains different anatomical structures isn't it about which you came to know in some of our previous lectures and you know that uh, this is the first portion this is the first portion of her stomach and it constitutes the cardiac part it constitutes the cardiac part of the stomach and here it is the next very region this very region isn't it one minute this is the next region then here this is the next region at this very region now it will cons it constitute actually fundic part or the fundus and then there was a third region third the biggest region of the stomach that is from here to here and that very part is called as what body body part isn't it and then there is the next region of your stomach that is known as the pyloric region or the pylorus isn't it this is the pylorus part pylorus part and you know that the pylorus part has been further divided into two parts number one is pyloric antrum say this very portion this portion is pyloric antrum i will write down here pa because about its anatomy you already know which uh, we have already discussed in some of our previous lectures and this very canal like structure is known as you know pyloric canal. So, far as the medical science language is concerned the stomach has been divided into two regions upper region and the lower region. The lowermost region of the stomach is known as the carded region is not it remember it the lowermost region of the stomach is known as carded region and the uppermost region is known as the orad region. If I will divide the stomach into two parts, if I will divide it into two parts, say I have divided the stomach into this part and this part, this very part is known as, this very part, the upper part is known as orad, this very part is known as the orad. This is the overhead region, isn't it? And the lower region of the stomach, which is lying just beneath to this very line, this very region is known as the caudate region. And here I will write down for this very portion as caudate, caudate region. The terms like the cardia, the fundus, the pylorus, the pyloric canal are mostly being used by the academicians and uh, the terms which are being used uh, by the medicos, they are mainly using these two terms, the upper region of the stomach has been named as the overhead region and the lowermost region has been, the lowermost, uh, lower part of the region has been named as the caudate region, leave it. But here I have made some cells which are present in the stomach though they are present in different formats of the glands in which you came to know in your previous lecture in which uh, we came to know that there are fundic glands isn't it there are pylori glands isn't it in which uh, we said that the different types of the cells are present but here in order to make well understanding of our today's topic i have made a few cells which actually constitute constitutes the glandular epithelial region of uh, our stomach isn't it? And besides that, you already know that to the interior of the stomach, there is prevalence of these undulatory structures, linings, which are called as the gastric rugae. And you also know that this very region is called as uh, 
uh, the greater curvature and this very region is called the lesser curvature and uh, that is not uh, the topic of this time and uh, in this at this time we will come to know the role which is being played by the different cells for uh, the regulation or for having a control over the secretion of their respective secretions or the enzymes or their hormones or their substances or their uh, hydrogen ions or the hydrochloric acid or some important uh, biochemicals and here i have made for getting a good understanding i have made a one cell let me write down here that as if it is our zymogen or chief cell or peptic cell i will write down here as if it is the peptic cell one minute i have used black color here so i will use here black color as well say this is the peptic cell peptic cell it is present in the different glandular regions of uh, the interior wall of our stomach and here i have made the another cell that is parietal cell this is parietal cell the role which is being played by the parietal cell and the peptic cell now you already know that it is responsible for the secretion of which things it is responsible for the secretion of which things but uh, today we will be getting knowledge about the mechanism which is being operated over such cells for having a good regulation or control over their respective secretions isn't it then we are seeing here two cells which are present in mostly in lower region or in the carded region or in the pylori region of our stomach one was our d cell and another was our g cell if you remember isn't it and besides that i have made some other cells here these cells which are mucus cells mucus these are mucus cells and besides that i have made one more polygonal shaped or the triangle shaped cell here which uh, uh, i have made here in between these two cells that is the peptic cell and the parietal cell and it has been seen that uh, in these cells there is sometimes presence of very important another cell which is known as ecl remember it that this very cell is known as this very cell an important cell i have shared it it is known as ecl and for your kind information this ecl refers to enterochromaffin like cell it refers to enterochromaffin like cell e here refers to please remember it entero c refers to chromaffin chromaffin isn't it and l f this l refers to like so this is what this is entero chromaffin like cell which has an utmost importance for the regulation of this gastric secretion now let us have a look the role of the mucus cell was the synthesis of some secretions including some phospholipids isn't it including most important thing that is the mucin including water including hco3 these substances were synthesized from what from your mucus cell and your peptic cell was responsible for the synthesis of the organic products including the enzymes that is uh, pepsinogen it was responsible for the synthesis of pepsinogen 
and it was also responsible for the synthesis of gastric lipase. Remember it, gastric lipase. And then there was the parietal cell, which you know, it was having the main role for the gastric secretion because it was responsible for the synthesis of the important degradative material or the corrosive material that is HCL which is the basic re reason that uh, our gastric juice is having a pH range from 1.8 to 3.5 and this HCL and this parental cell was also responsible for the synthesis of Castle's intrinsic factor CIF or intrinsic factor as well, is not it? And uh, you also know that this G cell was responsible for the synthesis of something else into our blood vessel, say it is the respective blood vessel. And in this blood, this G cell was synthesizing gastrin, is not it? Gastrin. And here, this D cell was responsible for the synthesis of somatostatin. Somatostatin. And besides that, we have also two unique sphincters lying in the cardiac region and in the pyloric region of our stomach. In the cardiac region, the respective sphincter is called as cardiac sphincter. This is the cardiac sphincter and this is what? This is your pyloric, this is your pyloric sphincter. Is not it? Now, let us have a look. When these enzymes have acted upon the bolus, they have led, led to the degradation of carbohydrates, proteins and lipids up to some extent. And it was because of the synthesis of this pepsinogen, which lead to the formation of such things, peptones, peptides and you also know that the pepsinogen is responsible for the degradation of peptide bond. When the peptide bond of the protein is degraded, then the protein gets converted into its lower forms like peptides are there, peptones are there, is not it? And uh, it, is, it was because of the pepsinogen that protein digestion or breakdown of the protein because of breakdown of which bond peptide bond took place. And it was because of this gastric lipase, which lead to some sort of digestion, which lead to some sort of breakdown of the ester bond of the lipids and that lead to the formation of what? That lead to the formation of some fatty acids, is not it? Plus glycerol, fatty acids and glycerol. And the prevalence of fatty acids and glycerol including the action of salivary amylase over the bolus. When we have incorporated bolus into our stomach, we have incorporated that along with the salivary amylase. It is said that up to 20 minutes almost, when we take high protein rich, carbohydrate rich, lipid rich food and uh, for that food, it is our salivary amylase which acts over the different glycosidic bonds of the carbohydrates in our stomach even for at least 20 minutes. So, the action over the carbohydrates is also being taken in our stomach. If anybody will ask you a question that the whether the digestion of the carbohydrates is taking place in the stomach or not, your answer should be yes. Why? Because we have taken bolus and in along with our bolus there was prevalence of salivary amylase and it is this salivary, salivary amylase which is responsible for the degradation of what? The glycosidic bond. So, the digestion of the carbohydrates continues in the stomach though it is stopped later due to the decrease in the pH, is not it? But the digestion of carbohydrate does take place in our stomach because of the salivary amylase, not because of any other type of the enzyme which is present somewhere else, is not it? And uh, because of that, 
we also have some carbohydrate products like uh, we have disaccharides we have disaccharides and some monosaccharide units as well prevailing in the stomach as a product of the bolus because of the digestion so because of the prevalence of these products the protein digested products the lipid digested products the carbohydrate digested products in the kind when they reach towards the lower region or towards the carded region of our stomach then some specific factors are being operated with which the regulation of the synthesis of the respective enzymes and these respective secretions is initiated so the first thing here which we should know that it is the presence of all such things in the lower pyloric canal isn't it or even the pyloric antrum then in the lining or in the lumen of the duodenum which initiates the regulation of the gastric secretion you know so far as our previous lecture is concerned it was this gastrin hormone which along with the blood traveled up to up to our parietal cell up to our peptic cell and it induced it for the synthesis of our pepsinogen isn't it or for the synthesis of gastric lipase it also traveled along with the blood and it induced what it induced your parietal cell as well to synthesize hcl to operate well this uh, hydrogen ion pump or the the potassium sodium gated channels there but to secrete the acid in the form of hydrochloric acid isn't it and now if the secretion of the gastrin will be reduced then the secretion of these respective secretions will be also reduced isn't it it was because of some important factors uh, which were acting as the receptive factors say here was a receptive factor for the gastrin which is called as g receptor here it was another receptor which was present in this very parietal cell which was called as g receptor g first receptor usually that is called and uh, it is it was because of this very g receptor which was receiving the signal from the gastrin hormone and uh, the gastrin hormone was playing its respective role for the parietal cell or the peptic cell to induce them for having their respective secretions isn't it and uh, then when the time will reach into this region watch carefully here but time will reach along with such products there are some chemoreceptors some chemoreceptors are present along the lining of this very pyloric canal or along the lining of the intestine isn't it as you know in the mucosine and in the submucosal region of our gastrointestinal tract there is prevalence of enteric nervous system and there are some enteric neurons isn't it some enteric neurons which are present in the mucosa or submucosa of the gastric wall or the intestinal wall once they get these chemicals signaling that is uh, the chemicals in the form of uh, some ions some minerals some uh, Uh, amino acids peptones isn't it these uh, lipid products fatty acids etc they have some chemical receptors with which they came to know that uh, now such type of biochemicals have arrived up to this region they get induced when they get induced they initiate a signal when they initiate a signal they transmit that very respective signal they transfer that very respective signal to the gastric secretion center in our previous lecture we came to know that there was a the cerebral cortex which was inducing the hypothalamus then hypothalamus was inducing the medulla and the respective gastric center and uh, then via the vagus nerve or the 10th cranial nerve it was sending signaling 
to these uh, different glands or the different cells of uh, our gastric lining for having a good secretion of their respective enzymes or their other types of the secretions. But this time what has happened when most of the part of the process of the digestion in the gastric region of uh, our gastrointestinal tract or in the lumen of the stomach has taken place that has led to the conversion of some food items into such food items and because of the chemo, chemo signaling that the different receptors which were present in these different regions of mucosal or the submucosal regions of uh, these very two parts this are sending some signals from here to the respective center then from the respective center the Wagner ruby is being induced for having a decreased synthesis of acetylcholine remember it then via vagus nerve via vagus nerve which has been induced through this anterior reflex then this vago vagus reflex uh, this nerve reflex gets activated in a such a way so that there is least secretion of acetylcholine isn't it it was this acetylcholine whose receptors were present in almost every region of the stomach and which was indirectly inducing the different secretory cells of the stomach to have their respective secretions. And it was this acetylcholine which was saying or which was guiding the D-cell for synthesis of what? Gastrin. Then gastrin uh, as a hormone was traveling through the blood and it was then inducing the parietal cell then the peptic cell for having a good synthesis of their respective enzymatic or the acidic secretions. Now when the acetylcholine has come it has ordered the G-cell to have least secretion of gastrin. When gastrin will be leastly secreted, leastly secreted, leastly secreted, leastly secreted, isn't it? Then there will be no one who will guide these two cells for having their respective synthesis of their respective secretions. Like hydrochloric acid was there, like uh, this uh, pepsinogen was there, or in, in some cases the prorenin was there, or the gastric lipase was there. This is the first mechanism, isn't it? And then let us come to the next part for today's lecture that is the role which is being played by the duodenal epithelial cells here are some cells isn't it these are present in the duodenum and some of the cells of the duodenum are responsible for the synthesis of uh, similar types of the hormones like they can synthesize a hormone CCK which stands for what? Cholecystokinin, isn't it? And some cells of the duodenum are called as S cells. Some are CCK cells, some are S cells which are responsible for the synthesis of for the synthesis of another hormone that is secretin isn't it and there are some cells also which are responsible for the synthesis of some other substances like neurotensin some cells are also responsible for the synthesis of another substance known as neurotensin Some other products are also there uh, like uh, the secretion of some factors which are having uh, the similar impacts like uh, PYY, this uh, peptide is there which is having the similar ro role for the degradation of or for having a regulatory control over the secretion of these things. I will repeat first something here that till now we came to know that uh, the different uh, cells of the stomach are present in the form of peptic cells, parietal cells, isn't it, or the auxentic cells and ECL cells or anterochromophin like cells, isn't it, and there are mucus cells. These peptic cells are responsible for the synthesis of pepsinogen and synthesis of gastric lipase. Parietal cells are responsible for the synthesis of hydrochloric acid, isn't it. And uh, they are also responsible for the synthesis of Casper's intrinsic factor, especially IF3. 
and we said is that the mucus cells are responsible for the synthesis of the mucus and this glandular cells are responsible g is responsible for the synthesis of gastrin and d is responsible for the synthesis of somatostatin doesn't it we said is that we also came to know that uh, the part of the duodenum which is associated with the pyloric region where this py pyloric sphincter of the stomach and uh, in that very part there are some cells which are responsible for the synthesis of some uh, regulatory biochemicals the regulatory biochemicals may include cck pyy neurotensin secretin etc now let us have a look over the role being played by such factors for having a regulatory role or what for the secretion of these very cells the primary thing was that once the time along with these biochemicals in the form of peptones in the form of polypeptides in the form of uh, these uh, uh, carbohydrate uh, monomer units or the dimer units isn't it or uh, the products of the fats uh, in the form of the glycerol or the fatty acids all such things when they reached into this region of the stomach they induced the myoenteric neurons we know that the myoenteric uh, nervous system is operating along the lining of the gastrointestinal tract uh, in which uh, uh, we came to know in uh, some of our previous lectures that there is presence of mesenerus plexus there is presence of the arabic plexus isn't it which are responsible for the regulation of the movements and other things as well but uh, let us know here that such receptors receive chemo signals and then they induce nerve signals and they transport those nerve signals up to the Uh, respective centers of our central nervous system and uh, they are asking or guiding the central nervous system to guide the stomach to guide the uh, gastric wall of the stomach for having a regulation over the secretion of its respective substances that was the first thing and that first thing operated because of the least secretion of the acetylcholine since acetylcholine was operating over the g cell now when least secretion of the acetylcholine will take place then g cells will be synthesizing less gastrin since gastrin was responsible for the induction of these cells to have their respective secretions when the gastrin secretion it has been reduced then obviously there will be reduction in such secretions this was the one thing and the number second thing was that as soon as the things will reach here now second thing has to operate there as well once the digestion process is partially completed in the stomach then the wave which was already taking place there uh, towards the interior lining of the stomach that uh, was leading to the churning of the food now the wave which was responsible for the churning of the food then now this wave will be intensified how that will be intensified let us have a look once these products have reached here the myoenteric nervous system will operate and they will induce the uh, three formats of the muscles of the stomach that is the oblique muscles longitudinal muscles circular muscles to exhibit movements and these movements will take place collectively and the collective movements will lead to the induction of the strong wave of the peristalsis from this very cardiac region and towards this very cardiac region and the most effective and the intensive part of the wave will be lying here in the pyloric region what that will do that will do one thing that will induce this pyloric sphincter to get opened had the wave been transported from this region to that region which uh, is uh, being which has been seen in the case of uh, the vomiting which we will discuss about that in some uh, other lecture but here let me tell you that if the wave would have have been operated from here and it, it if it would have been intensified anteriorly then that would have lead to opening of the cardiac this cardiac sphincter and uh, then that uh, the induction of this chyme along with the low ph high acidity would have induced the uh esophageal ulcers and other complications but no the mechanism is somewhat uh, so beautiful that the wave will generate from this region and it will be intensified towards the lower 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 and the intensification of this very peristaltic wave will be seen into this region will be leading to opening of pyloric sphincter once the pyloric sphincter will open this partially digested food will enter into what into the duodenum not in the bulk not in the bulk i have already told you that it is just like a paste when in late in the evening or early in the morning you are opening your paste tube or the toothpaste tube 
uh, you are punching it slightly, squeezing it slightly, that slight squeezing leads to outcome of that paste. And a similar sort of uh, squeezing will take place here and some part of the partially digested paste form of the food or the time will be incorporated into this region. And here what will happen? These cells will see these products and after seeing these products, they will be getting induced for the synthesis of cholecystokinin, secretin, neurotensin, PYY and some other products as well. And now this cholecystokinin and somatostatin will now both be having the regulatory effect over the G cell, isn't it? They will be having a regulatory effect they will be having a regulatory effect, secretin will be having a regulatory effect, isn't it? And even it has been seen, neurotensin has been uh, acting as a regulatory agent because it induces these myoentric neurons and other uh, neurons which are indirectly through this very reflex asking the wall of the stomach by having least secretion of the acetylcholine not to secrete more and more gastric juice. And now, when these secretions are secreted from the respective cells which are present in the duodenum, they will ask this gastrin to be in less concentration. But here, remember one more important thing that the gastrin hormone is present in two formats because of presence of the number of the amino acids. One gastrin is called as G17. Please remember it carefully and the second one is called as you have to do nothing, you have to add this 17 by 17. What will come there? That is G34. What does this 17 stand for? It is the 17 amino acids. If you, you will open this very gastric, this very protein, it will, it will be constituted of the 17 amino acids. And if you will open this G, it will be consisting of 34 amino acids. The most Abundant is G17 because this G17 is actually the main reason lying behind these parietal cells for having their HCL secretion, for having their CIF secretion, main reason lying behind uh, these uh, peptic cells for having the pepsinogen secretion, for having the proranin secretion, gastric lipase secretion, isn't it? And uh, this G17 has been the main reason for this very ECL for having its respective synthesis of It is responsible for the synthesis of histamine. Histamine. And this histamine is being secreted by what? By the ECLs, this cell. And then this histamine was also helping these two cells to have their uh, increased secretion of the HCL as well as these enzymatic secretions. But all such things were happening because of presence of G17 because for this G17, all such cells were having common receptors. Say, here it was the common G17 receptor, it was G17 receptor, it was G17 receptor. And as G17 was acting as an inducer. But according to most of the authors, it has been said that this very type of the gastrin is mostly synthesized by some other type of the G cells which are present in the duodenum isn't it? But the presence of the G34 was doing the same thing what was being done by the somatostatin, what was being done by the cholecystokinin or secretin or other things. So it was having an inhibitory effect. This very gastrin was having inhibitory effect. It was asking or guiding the G cell for having a least secretion of what G17. When there was least secretion of the G17, then there would have been the least secretion of all such things, isn't it? And now, so far as cholecystokinin or the secretin or the neurotensin, I will take them collectively otherwise we will be uh, elongating our topic. Let me conclude here in this way that all these things, somatostatin from what? From the D cell, cholecystokinin or the CCK, secretin, neurotensin, PYY. All such things which have been synthesized either by the D cell or either by the lining of this very region. All these are having the inhibitory effects. 
they are having inhibitory effects inhibitory effects inhibitory effects including this was having the inhibitory effect this g34 inhibitory effect isn't it and all such inhibitory effects were being implemented or these things for having least secretion of hcl least secretion of pepsinogen least secretion of other things as well and least secretion of histamine when there was least secretion of all those things at that very time it has been seen that there was increased secretion of the mucus when increased secretion of the mucus cells took place that lead to incorporation of more and more hco3 into the lumen along with the chyme that was now tending to increase the ph level level of the chyme isn't it but one such thing is where operating over the lining of the stomach wall thereby the regulation of the secretion of the respective cells prevailing in the different types of the glands of the stomach was taking place along with that the other happening was also there that was the inculcation of that chyme into this very region and these factors like somatostatin like somatostatin like secretin isn't it like cholecystokinin they were responsible for some other things as well sometimes you have taken the pro protein rich diet sometimes you are taking the lipid rich diet when you are taking the lipid rich diet then obviously along with the chyme there might be prevalence of the fatty acid or the glycerol cause breakdown of the acid bond would have taken place because of the gastric lipase isn't it and then such type of the food which was getting as if it is the chyme and it is containing these and these products isn't it when such products were reaching there they were inducing these cells to have synthesis of such things and among such things this this isn't it and the this it it were also responsible for inducing two other accessory glands one gland was present here let me make here say this is the liver now and it is it is gall bladder this was the right hepatic duct left hepatic duct common hepatic duct then what then here cystic duct then common bile duct this cholecystokinin is also inducing the liver cells to undergo the degradative process of cholesterol leading to formation of the bile and its products you know that the bile is present here which is being synthesized by the liver cells and bile contains bile salts bile pigment sodium glycolate sodium tarcolate lecithin and most other things isn't it and all such things are alkaline in the nature this cholecystokinin you here came to know that it induced the g cell not to synthesize more and more g17 and at the mean time along with the blood since it is acting as a hormone it is asking the liver to synthesize more and more bile for, from the degradation of the cholesterol isn't it and it was also inducing it to send this very secretion that is the bile into what into the common bile duct right hepatic duct left hepatic duct common hepatic duct this very duct which is draining what which is draining the gallbladder this very duct is called as cystic duct and when these ducts will combine they will form a common duct that very common duct is called common bile duct i need not write down the names here because uh, you have went through the anatomical lecture uh, previously here i will say one thing that it was this cholecystokinin which was inducing this for having the good degradation of the cholesterol there by its size more and more the products which are present in the bile besides that the secretin has been also synthesized isn't it and the secretin was having the same effect over these g cells for having decreased synthesis of what g17 and this secretin again these two things both cholecystokinin and secretin 
I told you what cholecystokinin will ask, will order the liver and the secretin will ask. This vary because uh, the receptors of CCK and the secretin are also present here. See this, this is the receptor for cholecystokinin CCK receptor, CCKR which is called as CCKR receptor, cholecystokinin receptor isn't it and here is S1 receptor or the, sec the secretin 1 receptor. It will induce the wall of the gallbladder to get squeezed in such a way so that the bile which was present here or the hair they will get incorporated into this common bile duct and this common bile duct will come towards the lower side and you know that uh, this very common bile duct is combined with another duct. I will first make here another duct and this duct is coming from what? It is coming from your pancreas and you know that in your pancreas there is presence of Essner cells, there is presence of islets of Langerhans. See, I have to complete the whole regulatory process here otherwise in the next lecture there will be confusion for making you understand this very portion. Almost we have concluded. Please cooperate. Now, what has happened? This secretin and this cholecystokinin in a unitary manner have guided the liver and the gallbladder to, uh, to put the bile into this common bile duct. And this common bile duct comes down, down, down and it is combined with another duct that comes from the pancreas. And it is this pancreas which has, which has some SNR cells as well as the islets of the Langerhans. And these factors like somatostatin is there, remember it, cholecystokinin is there, secretin is there. And these factors are and these cells or the histolic, histological region of the pancreas is having such receptors as well. See, they are having such receptors. So, they also will be induced under the influence of what? They will be influenced by secretin, they will be influenced by your cholecystokinin as well. And they are getting induced for having synthesis or secretion of its respective juice. And that respective juice contains different enzymes, isn't it? That contains pancreatic lipase, pancreatic amylase is there, isn't it? Uh, chemotrypsins are there, protein digesting, lipid digesting, carbohydrate digesting enzymes are present in what? In the secretion of the pancreas. And the secretion of the pancreas has been induced by this cholecystokinin as well as secretin and many of the other factors. And at the same time, this secretion comes here, this secretion comes here, and there is a common duct. This very common duct is known as hepatopancreatic duct. Listen here. Here you have seen right hepatic duct, left hepatic duct, then they have merged with one another and they have resulted in the formation of what? Common hepatic duct, then the cyst duct which has drained your gallbladder, then this duct combines with common hepatic duct and results in the formation of the more common duct that is known as common hepatic duct, isn't it? And then this common hepatic duct has been merged with your pancreatic duct. Ultimately, it has a lead to the formation of hepatopancreatic duct. This hepatopancreatic duct will come and it has its opening into the duodenal wall along with the presence of special muscle known as ampullary muscle or ample of waiter along with the sphincter known as sphincter of OD. Remember it it is known as sphincter of OD which is present along with the ampullary muscle which is regulating it is opening as well as the closure. Besides that we are also having the accessory pancreatic duct about which we will come to know in some other lecture. But here we have seen that sphincter of OD is regulating the incorporation of the hepatopancreatic juice into what? Into your duodenum. And now this hepatopancreatic juice will be having so many things present within it that will be now consisting of different things like here I will show you that 
this is the secretion which you got from what from the pancreas and this is the secretion which you got from the gallbladder or these bile ducts out of the liver and now this secretion which has to be incorporated into the duodenum which will be acted upon the chyme which has just been incorporated via the pyloric sphincter into this very part of the duodenum and this consists of let me write down here it consists of proteases proteases the role of which will be discussed in the next lecture but here let me write down it also consists of nucleases nucleases it also consists of lipases it also consists of many types of carbohydrates carbohydrates and uh, it also consists of bile verdin isn't it it also consists of bilirubin it also consists of bile salts it also consists of lecithin bicarbonate ions sodium potassium chlorine i have write down a few things here sodium potassium some chlorine is there some hco3 negative is there isn't it and uh, sodium glycolate is there i will write down here nagly sodium glycolate sodium tarcolate sodium tarcolate is there etc these are the different products which you will find in the hepatopancreatic duct which now have to be incorporated into the duodenum but under the influence of secretin under the influence of cholecystokinin it was this secretin and cholecystokinin along with the somatostatin which uh, induced the g cell which ordered the g cell to have least secretion of what g70 which lead to the regulation or having a control over the secretion of the peptic cell as well as parietal cell including this ecl cell isn't it and besides that it is this neurotensin pyy and the somatostatin which along with the blood are reaching up to your ecl cell since ecl cell was responsible for the synthesis of the histamine which was helping the parietal cell or the peptic cell for having their respective secretions but under the influence of all these under the influence of somatostatin under the influence of pyy under the influence of neurotensin these three these three will come together these three will come together these three will come together isn't it and they will be having inhibitory effect they will be having inhibitory effect and here they will be having inhibitory effect for what for this ecl cell or enterochromaffin cell and when they will be having the inhibitory effect over this cell it will now decrease the content of the synthesis of histamine and when histamine will be least released then it won't be in a position to help this and this cell for having the hcl synthesis and for having the degradative enzyme synthesis so less hcl synthesis will take place here now and less or negligible synthesis of pepsinogen gastric lipase etc will take place pepsinogen gastric lipase proreenin this their least secretion as a result of the regulation process will take place besides that when the chyme reaches into this very important region there can be prevalence of some particular neuro these uh, uh, these uh, biochemicals in the form of ionic substances sometimes there can be products of the lipids sometimes there can be products of the proteins as we have seen under the influence of the lipid products the cells will synthesize cck secretin neurotensin accordingly besides that there are some other factors other biochemicals which are also being synthesized by the different uh, epithelial lining of the duodenum which are also regulating the gastric secretion process from our stomach and such things as we mentioned them in the, our previous lecture such things include such thing is also include gastric inhibitory polypeptide gip isn't it such thing is also include the vasoactive 
vasoactive intestinal polypeptides isn't it all these things are also having the similar regulatory effects over the secretory cells of the stomach so in this way the gastric secretion is being regulated and now if the food or if the bolus would have been having more quantity of the carbohydrates then obviously the chyme will be having the carbohydrate monomer units in the form of the glucose disaccharides etc and when some different types of the epithelial cells of our uh, duodenum when they are observing the pres presence of the carbohydrates here then they lead to the release and synthesis of more and more secretin and pyy which collectively are asking the islet subclavian hands because islet subclavian hands are having different cells about which we will come to in our endocrine portion of the lectures in which we will come to know islet subclavian hands contain alpha cells beta cells delta cells theta cells and many other things and some of them are responsible for synthesis of the somatostatin some are responsible for synthesis of the vips some are responsible for the synthesis of some other products but the important cell among the islets of the langer hands is that of the beta cell which is responsible for the synthesis of important hormone known as insulin listen carefully when the epithelial lining of our duodenum perceives the prevalence of carbohydrate digested products then the same cells along with these secretions ask or order the islets of langer hands especially of the beta cells to synthesize insulin and insulin is responsible for the decrease of the glucose level in our blood for the increases this uh, glycosidic uh, bond synthesis for the increased inculcation and utilization of the glucose in our cells in our tissues thereby increasing the absorptive process as well about which we will come to know in the later parts of uh, our uh, these uh, online lectures but here we have seen that this very duodenal region upper small intestine is which constitute or which is mainly responsible for the intestinal phase of the gastric secretion and the cells which are present here whether they are cck cells whether they are s cells whether they are n cells whether they are any type of the cells they are synthesizing such products which are indirectly or directly guiding these cells of uh, the gastric lining to have decreased or the delayed synthesis of their respective secretions not only that they are sometimes also inducing the wall of the through the myoenteric neurons the wall of the lining of the stomach to exhibit least peristaltic movements because sometimes if uh, in uh, in your previous lecture you came to know if you are you will be taking the food containing more lipids then it will take more time for that food to remain present in the stomach and that is also being regulated by this very portion of our gastrointestinal tract because once these cells will assess the prevalence of the products of uh, the lipids in the form of the glycerol or the fatty acids they will also induce these uh, neurons through sympathetic and parasympathetic system especially through the sympathetic neurons to that uh, will ultimately lead to decreased peristaltic movement is decreased movement is by the oblique muscles by the uh, by the circular muscles and by the longitudinal muscles of our stomach in this way the regulation of the synthesis of different products has been discussed here and uh, the regulation of inculcation or incorporation of uh, the partially digested food that is the chyme through the pyloric sphincter has been discussed here under the nervous control under the hormonal control under some specific biochemical synthesis isn't it and here in the gastric part of our gastrointestinal tract we have seen different types of the enzymes which were including you know 
pepsinogen it was responsible for what protein synthesis protein digestion and uh, lipase responsible for uh, fat digestion and uh, histamine the release from the ecr cell were responsible for uh, helping these two types of the cells and we also came to know that the parietal cells synthesize hcl hcl leads to activation of the pepsinogen into the pepsin thereby the, uh, helping in uh, indirectly helping in the protein digestion and it has uh, one more important function here that is uh, it uh, it is because of this hcl that if some bacterial uh, these flora has been incorporated unwanted bacteria unwanted antigens has been incorporated into our stomach along with the food they will get neutralized automatically by the strong acid isn't it and after that we have another factor that is the intrinsic factor also known as caspase intrinsic factor this caspase intrinsic factor is responsible for having uh, the good absorption of vitamin b12 isn't it it is this caspase intrinsic factor which we will come to know that it helps us in the absorption of the vitamin b12 which would have been present in our food and uh, you know, besides that there is presence of the g cell and the d cell it was responsible for synthesis of g17 and g17 was the inductor factor and uh, it, there was other type of uh, this gastrin that is called the g14 on the basis of the amino acids we divided them and just the g34 was almost having an inhibitory effect over the g17 we also came to know that the d cell was responsible for the synthesis of somatostatin which was uh, indirectly regulating the synthesis of the gastrin under the influence of the nervous control vago vago reflex is there isn't it and uh, we have seen that the mucus cells are also there which are responsible for the synthesis of the mucin or the mucus which was ultimately responsible for my making a shield over the interior lining of our stomach which is protecting our stomach from uh, gastric ulcers and other things and last let me tell you one more thing that is once a person takes drugs once a person takes some unwanted things like the junk foods are there increase of salt content is there isn't it and some other unwanted chemicals are there they may deteriorate the whole mechanism of the synthesis of the or for the operation of the hydrogen ion pumps or the for the synthesis of the pepsinogen for the for, for this uh, for the synthesis of the gastrin for secretin and other things that can lead to deterioration of the whole mechanism which can lead to development of the different gastric ulcers gastric problems are there and sometimes some drugs are leading to unwanted opening of the cardiac sphincters leading to the inculcation of the strong gastric juice acidic juice into the uh, esophagus leading to the esophageal cancers or the ulcers as well and and uh, some persons are saying that it, it whether it is good to take uh, some uh, carbonated water in the form uh, in the form of the cokes and what effect they will be having over the digestion of the food they won't help you in the digestion of the food let me tell you that if you are taking the cokes uh, in a different formats that will lead that may lead to increased peristaltic movements here in the stomach and uh, the gas is present there they may lead to increased prevalence of the gas bubbles there leading to increased pressure over both of the sphincters then sometimes when this unwanted opening of the pyloric sphincter takes place and you are saying that i have taken a good meal and after that i have used the cokes and that uh, uh, this uh, coke drink has made my stomach or the abdomen relaxed but that is not the case because that can lead to the unwanted opening of your cardiac sphincter as well when it is unwanted opening will take place then the gastric secretion can get incorporated or it can get regurgitated into the esophageal part and in most of the cases we are seeing that uh, most of the persons have developed the esophageal cancers esophageal ulcers that can be one cause as well so in our today's lecture we came to know the intestinal phase of the gastric secretion and we came to know that uh, what are the mechanisms lying behind the uh, the regulatory uh, mechanism of the secretion of the different uh, glandular cells of the stomach wall and we also came to know that uh, in the stomach digestion of proteins took place isn't it digestion of some carbohydrates took place digestion of lipids took place isn't it and all their digestion lead to formation of the peptides peptones and other protein products they lead to formation of some monomer units of the carbohydrates like glucose was there or uh, other these di trisaccharides were there or glycerol was there these uh, uh, this uh, glycerol along with some fatty acids was there isn't it
and all these along with the gastric secretion and the water and the minerals and some fiber and some other things were uh, resulted in the formation of paste like substance known as chyme and we have seen that this chyme has been incorporated partially and in a regulatory manner into the duodenum now this chyme will be acted upon by the enzymes which would have been otherwise present in the secretion of the pancreas and in the secretion of the intestinal glands about which we will come to know in the